Hi everyone, welcome to Auntie Tay's YouTube channel. I am not Auntie Tay, but I am here to share some fun crafty things with you. My name is Haley and I'm the Canadian crafter behind the foiled plan here on YouTube, but Auntie Tay has asked me to come and share all about foiling with all of her friends. So I'm so excited to be here sharing this series with all of you to learn about foiling. We're now on episode three. If you missed the previous two episodes, in episode one, we went over the basics of foiling, what it is, what you need to get started. In episode two, we went over a project that was perfect for a beginner, start to finish. We went over everything. So if you are new to foiling, I suggest going back, watching those first, because today we're going over my top 10 troubleshooting techniques to achieve the best foiling results. Before we actually get into my top 10 techniques, I want you to think back to eighth grade science class when you're completing a new experiment. So to achieve the most accurate results, you change one variable at a time. If you're having foiling frustrations, start by changing one thing at a time. That way you know exactly what was causing your issue. Let's kick off my troubleshooting techniques with tip number one. Make sure you're using the correct type of printer. I've had many people reach out to me and say that the foil didn't stick to anything on the page. Every single time the issue has been that they were using an inkjet printer rather than a laser printer. It absolutely must be a laser printer because the process works with toner, not ink. Bonus points if you use a monochromatic laser printer, which means it only prints black. Moving on to tip number two, make sure your design is optimized for the size you plan to print. For the best foiling results, we want our design to be as crisp and black as possible. So if we start with a design that's really small and we try and blow it up to fit our print size, chances are the line work and the edges are going to be really fuzzy and blown out. That's gonna print so the foil will stick to those fuzzy blown out lines. So it's just not going to look as crisp which ultimately leaves you with a lower quality looking foiling project. So again, make sure your design size is optimized for the size you plan on printing. Moving on to tip number three. If you notice that your foil looks a little spotty or there's some patchy areas where the foil didn't stick to your design, try a higher heat setting. It can mean that the toner was not getting hot enough in order to get tacky as it went through the machine, which is what really makes the toner stick to those spots. So try a higher heat setting. And because we're doing that science project, I would suggest going up by one heat setting at a time and then refoiling your project to see if your results are any better before you go up to a heat setting that's even higher. Alrighty, tip number four. If you happen to notice ripples or waves in your cardstock, that is a good indication that your heat temperature setting is too high. So we'll try that variable change by dropping the heat setting down by one, refoiling and see what our results are like. Alternatively, you can also opt for a thicker cardstock and stay at the same temperature. So either change your temperature or change your cardstock. Just change one of those variables at a time. Let's move on to tip number five. We're talking all about transfer folders. If you're not using a transfer folder and you happen to notice your foil is moving around on your design as it passes through the machine and things end up where they shouldn't be, try using a transfer folder. It's a great way to keep everything in place. Alternatively, if you are using a transfer folder and you're noticing uneven results with your foiling, try foiling without your transfer folder. You may notice that after you have foiled a project that there is black specks all over your design or just in certain areas of the cardstock that were not originally there when you printed your image. So what can happen is if you place a design into a transfer folder and the design is not completely covered with foil, as it goes through the machine, that toner from the design that's not covered with foil will actually transfer onto the transfer folder. And then every time you use that folder again, if you have cardstock that touches that area that has been transferred onto the folder, it's going to heat up and transfer back onto the cardstock. Now you can use acetone and other things to clean your transfer folder if you do happen to get toner 
liner on it, but there will still come a time where your folder will just need to be replaced. All right, tip number six, if you're noticing spotty results, it could be that your cardstock is too textured. I always recommend using a smooth cardstock, so the smoother the better. I use the Recollections brand paper packs from Michaels. They're a great option. So if you're noticing spotty results, try a smoother cardstock. Tip number seven, try waiting to peel your foil. Now this usually isn't the issue, but I do still like to keep this on my list of I'll try anything at this point options when it comes to fixing my foiling. So once your design has passed through the machine, set it off to the side, just let it cool down a little bit before you do your foil peel. With tip number eight, we're focusing on our printer. Most people know that you can change your printer settings on your computer, but did you also know you can change them directly on most printers? Once I found this out, game changer, mind blown. Thinking back, I remember I had this design and I knew that it was optimized for my print settings. <laughs> tip number two but it still was printing very strange and it was fuzzy and there was lines and it just, something wasn't right. Turns out I needed to change the setting on my actual printer to tell it that I was printing with heavyweight cardstock rather than just copy paper. As soon as I changed that setting and reprinted my design, chef's kiss, everything was perfect. Tip number nine, let's talk about toner. When I first got my laser printer, I used the name brand cartridge of toner that came with it. And then about a year after I had it, it was time to finally replace my cartridge. Now toner cartridges can be a little bit pricey. So I sought out to find something that was a little bit more cost effective. I found a refurbished cartridge that was sent to work with my machine. And don't get me wrong, it did. It was the right size and everything, it did work. But it was so hit and miss with the quality of my actual print. So out of 10 prints, only three would actually print the way that they should have printed. I switched back to the name brand cartridge of toner that came with my machine, zero issues with my printing. I was wanting to do this refurbished cartridge because it was cheaper, but in the long run, it ended up actually being more because I was wasting more time, wasting more toner, and wasting more paper when things would print out and they would be a disaster. So stick with the type of toner that your printer is supposed to have. All right, tip number 10, try a print shop. If you think the culprit for your foiling frustrations is your printer, rather than running out and buying a new printer right away, I suggest going to a local print shop, having them print something on a laser printer, bringing it back home and foiling it in the same way that you were doing previously. But the only variable that has changed is of course your printer. All right, that was 10 troubleshooting techniques for the best foiling results, but I have one final bonus tip for you before I go. And that tip is if you have exhausted all of your options and you still can't figure out what the problem is with your foiling, take a break. I know that seems silly, but foiling is one of those things that honestly just has a mind of its own. And there's times even after years of foiling practice where the foil is just like, I'm not having it today. Just walk away, take a break, and come back to it another time. Just make sure if you do walk away from it, turn the mink machine off because there's no auto turn off. So yeah, take a break, walk away, come back to it another time, turn the machine off, and have a little snack. That usually helps me. I feel better after that. All right, well, I hope you found my 10 troubleshooting techniques for the best foiling results helpful. Foiling can be frustrating, but it is my absolute favorite thing to do in my craft room. So if you used any of these troubleshooting techniques to help with your foiling results, let us know which ones work best for you in the comment section below. Once again, I wanna thank Auntie Tay for allowing me to share my love of foiling with all of her friends here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed to her channel so you don't miss the rest of this series and her fun videos. Also, if you'd like to become a foiled friend, head on over to my channel. You'll find the link in the description box below, but my channel name is The Foiled Plan. Again, my name is Haley. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me again today. We'll see you in the next video where we'll go over alternative ways to foil. I hope you have a super awesome day and that's all I'm gonna say. Bye!